Right. Well, Sam, so welcome to the Boy Please Whatever podcast, your favorite podcast, the only podcast that matters. This is episode 15. It's my season <laughs> finale. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, uh, shit kind of snuck up on me. I had no clue I had done uh, that many episodes until last week. But yeah, this is episode 15, so I'm going to take a break. Not a long break, but I'm going to take a little hiatus to go ahead and get my... Um, you know, my thoughts together and kind of revamp and see what we can do different. It's just my first time doing it alone. So I don't want to say this is a test run because I feel like I had a great, great first run. But there's always room for improvement. Hey, Robin, I'm going to give you guys some time to log in. I know Facebook is dragging behind all the time. What's up, Sean? Are you coming home this weekend for the alumni picnic? I ain't seen you and I don't know how long. But, yeah, give everybody time to get on. Make sure you hit the share button for me and – if you could tag my um my original page, just D Smith instead of D Smith too, just D Smith. But yeah, uh, if you're new to the podcast, thank you for joining, and uh, you can also catch me on YouTube as well, and you can catch me streaming on uh, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Google, and I'm also on an app called Overcast. Never heard of it, but I'm on that bitch too. So um, again, thank you guys for tuning in. What's up, Cam? I'm drinking, um, what the fuck is this? What's the name of this? It's not an Amaretto Sour. Midori Sour? I got it from uh, the liquor store. It's a little On The Rocks brand, so it's vodka. I normally don't fuck with vodka, so if I get to slumping over like 20 o'clock, just uh, put in the comments, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Yeah, I'm fucking up, so. But yeah, um, hope you guys had a good Monday. Uh, I got to work late. I partied all fucking weekend long. And I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. I cannot get up in the mornings. I don't. I guess I'm just not motivated. I don't want to say that um, I just can't get up on Mondays because if I had something to do on Mondays that I wanted to fucking do on Mondays, I'd be gone. So uh, I don't know. I guess I don't know if it's my job. I feel like I'm stuck. I'm not doing what I want to be doing. And uh, I've been doing the same shit for seven years, like literally the same routine every day. So I just, I don't know. I have a hard time making it to work, period, but especially Mondays because I like to party. And me and my friends got together two nights in a row. Well, shit, really, uh, was it the same day? It was the same day, honestly, because we got to her house like around midnight and we leave to four. Then we came back over there around about four or five o'clock the next afternoon. What's up, Derek? So, yeah, we partied uh, all weekend long. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. I, we was drinking, baby, ordering pizza, ordering uh, stupid shit, eating Dixie Queen, 40 pizza at 2 o'clock in the morning. We had a ball, baby. We, we, had, we had a good time. But anyway, um, of course, I started by talking about my weekend. My weekend was long, but it was quick, if that makes sense. I l- walked out of my house. My, uh, it's not the Incredible Hulk. It's a, um, um, I just said it. What the fuck am I drinking? I just said it. Uh, uh, I don't know. Midori, Midori, Midori sour. But um, my my dryer went out. So where I live, you have to provide your own washing dryer. So my dryer went out, and I haven't got anybody to come look at it yet. So I would normally go to my mama's house um, or my sister's house to dry my clothes. And, um, yeah, I walked outside. Something's going on with my car with a fuse. So the, like the alarm was shooting off and shit. So I got out of my car to see what the problem was, and my key was in ignition, and I live on an incline. The fucking door slammed. All the doors were locked. So I was locked out of my car for like three hours. Um, yeah, so that took a took a toll on my weekend. But anyway, when I did get my shit together, I went and turned the fuck up. But anyway, um, locked my keys in the car. What else did I do? I uh, had to go to AutoZone. I thought they sold the Slim Jims and they can break in cars with. They don't sell those, so I bought some fucking... Um, Jumper cables. I know they was they were like forty fucking bucks, damn near. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, um, this is my season finale. So I want to talk about some shit like what I've learned this season. Uh, one thing I did learn was that um, you are going to fail. And I was talking about this with a friend earlier. That um, that was one of my biggest fears was stepping out and doing shit on my own. I do not like failure. I do not like to know what failure looks like. And um, 
I don't know. I don't know if it's an embarrassment thing or I am very prideful uh, when it comes to certain things. I only do shit I know I'm good at. And I've always had people to kind of push me to do certain things. I've always found myself like, why the fuck is it me? Like, every time I'm in a group, whether it's at work or at school, when I was in church, like, all of that shit, it was kind of just like, why the fuck are y'all pushing me to the front, the forefront to do things? But I'm guessing people started to see shit in me that I didn't know I possessed. I thought I was just being a normal person. But the older I'm getting, I'm starting to kind of recognize, like, nigga, you know, do you. And, you know, like, walking and shit. And, um... Asking for help is okay. Like, it's not begging, and I've always wanted to do shit by myself. I'm not really a control freak, but it's always like, nigga, if you want to get something done, like, do it yourself. So, um, yeah, and I like I said, I had the imposter sh- syndrome. I always kind of struggle with being who the fuck I am. So, um, like, cheer yourself on. Be your biggest cheerleader. Fuck being humble. I feel like haters want you to be humble. Haters want you to be humble to make them feel comfortable. Like, continue to step on their motherfucking necks and pop your shit. Like, do you at all times. So, like, that's one thing I have learned. You got to work hard. Like, nothing happens overnight. And stop paying attention to views. Stop paying attention to comments. Like, it's cool to see people, you know, to get your shit out there. But, like, when you see people blow up and you seeing their content, a lot of times you go to their page, they've been at this shit for years. I've only been doing this three months. You know, I've only, I've, like I said, I've only had 15 motherfucking episodes. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you got to just do what you know to do. And long as you feel good to you, like I said on a previous episode, like, be true to yourself. But, yeah, like, pop your shit. Fuck a nigga. Like, for real. Like, pop your shit and do you. Only haters want you to stay humble, to make them feel comfortable because they, they like, lame as fuck. So, yeah, do you. Um, hey, Charlie. But, yeah, uh, and don't focus on, like, those people that are going to support you. I don't give a fuck if you got, like, I can't ever see who's all on here, like, as far as the numbers and shit. And people, you know, folks go live and be like, wait, don't get my live up. Wait till I get another 100 views. Man, fuck this shit. Do you. The motherfuckers is going to watch you. They're going to watch you. The people is going to talk to you. They're going to fuck with you. And a lot of times you will get people that support you and that don't know you. They will support you the most. Like, I look at my numbers all the fucking time. Most of my support comes out of Seattle, Washington. I've never even been to fucking Seattle, Washington. And tr- tr- and funny enough, like I always tell everybody, I, su- I really appreciate all of my family and all my friends supporting me. But funny enough, my lowest numbers are coming out of Memphis, Tennessee. My lowest numbers come out. Like I'm actually in the red in Memphis, Tennessee. So we got to get that. You know what I'm saying? We got to start supporting each other and shit like that. But you also got to realize you are not for everybody. I'm not everybody cup of tea. And like I know I kind of – when I came, like, out of high school and came home from college, I was, like, in the church circuit heavy, you know, singing, going to programs. So a lot of people, I make a lot of people feel uncomfortable. You know, a lot of people ain't without it um, cussing, I do, and drinking and talking about fucking and sex. And I'm vulgar. And, you know what I'm saying, if um, if I ain't fuck you, I ain't fuck you. You know what I'm saying? So focus on who the fuck going to support you. And you, like, know your failures are going to happen. Like, you are going to fucking fail. And you just can't be afraid of stepping out. You learn from this shit, baby. So, yeah. Um, I see y'all want to talk about. <laughs> What's up, Nicole? Hey, Keisha. So, hey, Charlie. Happy birthday, Charlie. Hey, cousin. Um, I do see. So, I do. I know. I do. I do know. I made a uh, um, comment earlier. I shared a photo. If <laughs> you said you are enough to do Jake's. Hello, baby. Walking in authority. But, um. Uh, Gabby, Gabrielle Union did an interview. I really don't watch much of her because it's something about her that come off as phony as fuck to me. So I don't really, there's something about Gabrielle Union that kind of turns me off in a way. Like, beautiful woman. I love the way she's handling the situation with, with her stepdaughter, Zaya, and all that. But there's just this, I don't know. Like when she was going at Boosie, she called him Boosie Boots. I was like, girl, that's the whitest shit you can say. So, uh, but yeah, she made a comment in her interview saying that she splits the bills 50-50 with Dwayne. So, I do know a lot of women feel like, you know, they don't want to, they, if they, if I get a man, a lot of women say real men pays all the bills. So, I know my biggest audience mostly is women. So, where does that mindset come from? I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. I can't stand her either, nigga. Like, I don't even say I can't stand her. It's just something about her that just doesn't seem like, you know, I just feel like she'll do something dumb, like put marshmallows in her sweet potatoes. Or 
You know what I'm saying? I just, like, she made gravy out of a packet. What's some other shit that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, but, you know, like, in the back to my topic, like, back in the older days, you would have, like, you know, grandmama's a homemaker. She's taking, she's taking care of the children. And then you would have her husband come home, hand her the motherfucking chick. And, you know, she takes care of the bills. So, it's, you know, I just don't. I don't know, like, is it a deal breaker for women that feel like men aren't going to, like, take, like, if I have to take care of most of the bills? Because sometimes you have women, I know a lot of women that make more money than their husbands. So doesn't it fucking make sense? <laughs> I don't know. 50-50 is a roommate situation. I'm not fucking my roommate. Speak for yourself, baby. But now, uh, my opinion, now you holding the bills, I got the house and the kids. Uh, Nicole said, I don't think all bills most, most, because men are supposed to take care of the household, be the man of the house. It may come from men when women couldn't work. Um, that's a good point, cousin. Uh, I do think this is probably something that has been passed down generationally, but I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like it's necessary. But again, I'm not a woman, so that's why I want to ask you guys. I don't think it should be a deal breaker because there's been times when my daddy was fucked up financially and my mama had to step the fuck up and she did step the fuck up and took care of what had to be taken care of. Like, because I also think about this, like, cost of living is, like, fucking extreme, like, rent and mortgages and shit like that. So, you know, if the woman makes more money than her husband, I just don't think it should be an issue with, I ain't going to say, like, if he is paying out of bills, you know what I'm saying? Don't get mad at him and call him a broke-ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get mean and shit. Like, nigga, you ain't got enough money. You know, I make more money than you. So I think that's the whole thing, too. That you got to men with our egos, and we want to be the, you know, the man of the house. So we feel like we have to take care of everything. But sometimes I feel like a lot of shit is the pressure from women, too. Um, because being in a gay relationship, we split everything 50-50, baby. It's no... <laughs> You know, I don't know. Do we go about who got the biggest dick you pay out of bills? I don't know. But um, mm, definitely not a deal breaker. Everybody got to bring in some income. I ain't saying you got to be working out of the home, but I think we all need to be generating income. All this shit's high. That's what I'm saying. Like, everything is high as fuck. And also, like, you know, and I don't take anything from uh, women who take care of the home because groceries is high as fuck. It's almost getting to the point where it's just about equal going out to eat and going to the grocery store. Like, the groceries high as fuck, and they won't give you stamps unless you homeless. You can't get food stamps if, with, with a fuck thing. Like, you can make $10 an hour, and they're like, you, got too, you, you make too much money, you got three children and daycare fees. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. And like I said, for me in a same-sex relationship, you know, we, like, I don't give a fuck if, <laughs> like, if the groceries, the grocery bill is having five dollars, baby, I need thirty-seven fifty. You know, I just, <laughs> I don't know. You, you a man, baby? Take care of yourself. <laughs> I just, I always say that you a man, baby. Like, and now if if there's a time when quad ain't got it or I ain't got it, you know what I'm saying? I do not fucking mind. But at the same time, you know. Robin said again, Gabby's 50 50 is Dwayne's. It's different still. It's still different than regular people. When you have millions of peace, ain't a burden. Yeah, and that, that makes sense too. These are rich people we're talking about. Um, you know, but I just, I think it's just, you know, I don't, and again, they don't give a fuck about how they're perceived. I just think it's crazy that um, you knowing how people on Dwayne ass trying to say you run the, the you run the household already, then you get on here and be like, well, bitch, I pay I pay half of the bills too. So, you know. Mm. I can't find a bitch selling stamps for saving my life. I mean, but groceries too high, like I don't think it's bitch, it's women still selling are y'all still still selling stamps? I just I don't know. Like shit shit too fucking hot to even be trying to hook a bitch up. Like, I don't know. I I be eating spaghetti so fucking much. It's like the cheapest thing you could buy that will last for a, a couple of days. Groceries are high as fuck. Like, mm. but yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, but also like when women are 
Like, I can't, these days, these women are a little different too, right? Everybody independent, you know, talking shit, fuck nigga free, baby, and ain't nobody singing about no love song. They trying to snatch your soul and all this shit. You can't expect me to pay all the bills and I come home and you to make fish sticks and rotel dip. I need, I need dinner. You know what I'm saying? I need some gravy, some hamburger steaks, a little onion, mashed potatoes, some little sweet peas, and some little sister super rolls. You know what I'm saying? Some Kool-Aid. I need some sustenance when I come home. I don't need you. I done paid all the motherfucking bills, and I come home, and you done made some easy mac and hamburger helper. You know what I'm saying? You got to step your pussy up. You know? Learn how to cook. You know? So, been to fold the clothes up or something. I'm, I'm out here working hard. Groceries are high, baby. Mm-mm. At groceries, like, when I tell y'all, I went to the grocery store the other day. What did I cook? I made some fucking, you ever been to a Mexican restaurant and you get like the margarita special with the yellow rice and the white cheese and the cheese and peppers. I mean the peppers, onions, and you get like the choice of protein. I made that. I swear to you, I spent $75 on yellow rice, some seasoning, some chicken breast, queso cheese, peppers, and onions. And I bought like some adobo seasons. I swear to God, my shit was like $75. Like I see why people go in there and steal. Like, ooh. mm mm-hmm. But, yeah, like I was saying, like, you have to. That's right, cousin. Feed that man. Like, don't feed me. I don't want no bullshit. I don't want tacos every Tuesday. Like, yeah, I run Taco Tuesday in the ground. If I'm at home paying, if I'm at work paying all the bills and you at home, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say I'm allowing you to stay home, but you at home with the kids. Taco Tuesday, not every Tuesday, baby. It's other food style with teas, baby. We can have tilapia Tuesday. What else style with tea? Um, I don't fucking know. But we can have other Tuesday. Give me some food style with teas. Because y'all, y'all done ran Taco Tuesday in the motherfucking ground. Y'all can at least do, like, quesadillas. We can have a bunch of lattes. Y'all do straight taco shells, baby. Y'all even put the tacos in the motherfucking, in the motherfucking oven. Y'all don't even heat them up, baby. Everything just be cold. Or y'all do nachos or Doritos. Baby, look. There's enough of that shit. What if you put that pussy on them? Hey, now, I wish I had a pussy. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I love my, I love having my meal pots, but, like, like I said on my previous episode, you got a pussy, baby. Ooh. That's the word that never runs dry. Jesus. Um. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just like add some shit. We get, okay, we can have turkey wing Tuesday. Thank you, friend. Turkey and dressing Tuesday. Give me something else. Turkey leg Tuesdays. Turkey neck Tuesdays. Yeah, I, I done ran Taco Tuesday in the motherfucking ground. You got to you gotta fucking crow on a Tuesday, baby. You can't find a pack of taco seeds and save your motherfucking life. Ground beef, gone. Ground turkey, gone. Salsa, gone. It's a food, baby. Mm-mm. So, God has been so good to get. God has been so good to women. Let me see you something. I said that on, I forgot the, I was the episode four. If you have a vagina, you have no reason to be broke. I'm telling y'all. Like, that is prime real estate. Oh, you know how many men have been killed behind some pussy? Come on. It ain't too many people can kill up no dick, baby. Niggas will fuck a chicken. But some pussy, I ain't never had none. It gots to be amazing, though. Because I ain't going to lie, women are nuts. <laughs> Y'all are fucking nuts. But niggas keep coming back. You got to be sickening. You got to be sickening. And, I, you know, I do watch little straight porn, so I like to, you know. But anyway. Mm. That pussy power. That pussy got power. I'm, baby, listen. They ain't made too many songs about no dick, baby. But vagina, mm-mm. it got to be amazing. I know it is. I wish I could have some. I, I wish I could have some, but I, I kind of break out. You know what I'm saying? Allergies. Um, what does I have? Um, so, um, I don't know if y'all saw Whitehaven High School had a uh, um, Graduation this weekend. Why haven't I always been like one of the overly populated schools ever since I can fucking remember? Um, they got into a fight and it wasn't the kids. So, if, you know, y'all yeah, know people say I hate kids, right? But I was really like, oh, I hope these children didn't ruin their graduation day fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. It was the fucking adults. Like, it was the family members fighting each other. I want to say they were fighting each other at the fucking graduation. I think that was fucking nuts. Like, what are we mad about? <laughs> like, why is it not hard to not fuck with a bitch and not talk to her because we're like and we be, and we're in the same space? Is that like impossible to achieve for adults? If I don't like you and I'm somewhere, I cannot like I saw a motherfucker I didn't like yesterday and I was around a whole family. 
I was around a whole family, and I do not fuck with them. And they know I don't fuck with them. They stayed away from me. I stayed away from them. Had they came to me and spoke, would I have been, like, trying to fight them? No, because it's not that deep. But I don't understand how adults can't go places and not fight. Like, I don't like you. You know you don't like me. Go the fuck on about your business. That is fucking crazy. And then we wonder why the kids are so bad and so motherfucking out of control because crack babies having crack babies that had some old crack babies. That's what the fuck going on. I was blaming all these children. It's the parents. Y'all fucking idiots out here too. Like, what the fuck? We, we had to, like, nobody thought to say, oh, bitch, I'm in my child graduation degree. I'm not going to do this with you. Like, my baby just graduated. Now, I understand the motherfucker hitting you. You defending yourself. I don't, know the, I don't know the details, but I'm just saying, bitch, go on about your business. We outside. We weren't even in the room where you was like, you had to be close to me, bitch. I could have been on the other side of the motherfucking uh, stands. I could be on the other end of the bleachers. Like, bitch, go the fuck on. That's why these kids fucked up, Will. Because these fucking adults don't know what the fuck, like, at the graduation? I, would, <laughs> I remember my daddy got arrested in my <laughs> I'm talking about these parents. My daddy fucking got arrested outside of <laughs> 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 Bitch, when I tell you, I forget all about that up until now. Jesus. My daddy got arrested. I was coming out of my high school graduation. We graduated at the University of Memphis in their Rose Theater. I was coming out happy, like, because I had a party that evening, right? I'm coming out happy as fuck. I wanted to see my daddy and his friend Jamie in fucking handcuffs on the other side of the railroad. I don't know if somebody had ran the stop sign, like the four-way stop. If you're from Memphis, you know what I'm talking about. If you're coming from up southern by U of M. There's like the little stop sign by the railroad track. It's kind of confusing when you come in up southern other street. I think is not Patterson. Well, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. My fucking daddy and Jamie got arrested. I'm coming out of like, hey, I couldn't even take a picture of my daddy, baby. He was like, get my, <laughs> yeah, with the women's office, say, get my children out of here, get my children out of here. Yeah, my fucking daddy got arrested, and I was just like, ugh, this nigga going to jail. But he got out that night. We potted down, but he fucking definitely got. Arrested, but he didn't fight. And when it was a traffic violation, and I think somebody's, I don't think, I don't know if it was fucking weed on somebody or somebody had a fucking license. I don't know, but my, I, I don't know, but my dad definitely got arrested outside of my graduation. And to think about, like, I'm coming out, people are like, did you your daddy in handcuffs? What? My dad's fucking 50. What do you mean he's in handcuffs? Sure the fuck did. He sure did. What's up, Brandon? Hey, praying for you guys. Love you. But yeah, my dad got arrested. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if y'all saw Top Golf. Uh, they said Top Golf is coming to Memphis. I actually saw the structure being built the other day. I think Top Golf is making a huge motherfucking uh, mistake. <laughs> I hate to be one of those people that you know, folks like yeah, I just got something bad said about Memphis. I just don't. I'm just not confident that it's just in a bad area. I'm not saying all of Memphis don't know how to act. I just feel like Top Golf is in a bad area. It's in East Memphis, like all the car break-ins over there at an all-time high. These young niggas breaking in shit in broad fucking daylight. And Top Golf is going to have a very, very huge parking lot. Uh, I don't know if it's like it's not really in a well lit area. It's like in a wooded area that they're creating. So um, it's like a one way street. Um, well, it's a two lane street, so I, that's the only thing that may save it. It's gonna be kind of hard to get out of traffic in a stolen vehicle, and it's like a red light right there, and it's a lot of traffic in a busy area. But I just don't. Um, I just think it's the wrong spot, Charlie. It's off Winchester and Germantown Road. You know that uh, Walmart is the Walmart and Sam's at Winchester. If you come back across that light, it's where that CarMax is. That little back entrance to CarMax is on the opposite side, and they they they're building it now. And the traffic already is bad right there. Any fucking way, so I don't know what they're gonna do. But I just feel like um, they're doing this shit for sport. They breaking the cars for sport here. Like the police in Memphis are giving away. Fucking steering wheel locks. 
Because it's not like, oh, we can't stop them, so we're going to give you some of these. We're not going to arrest these little motherfuckers. We're going to give you our steering wheel locks. And You know what I'm saying? They constantly breaking your window, and then the insurance company wants you to meet a fucking $500 deductible. The window don't cost $500, so you're not going to, you know what I'm saying, spend that. Girl, it's, it's all a motherfucking, it's a sham. But, yeah, um, I don't know. I just feel like it's in a very bad area. I think they should have pushed it further, maybe to Carlyville or uh, maybe the Bartlett area, maybe. Um, but they might as well put that motherfucker at Third and Parkway if they want to put it. You know, if they want motherfuckers to run it in the ground, I just I don't know. Yeah, they they they, they cutting steering wheels like YouTube showing these bitches how to break in cars. So that's another thing. Like, bitch, they know everything. But yeah, I think it's I think it's a fucking mistake. Um, Memphis niggas are different. Memphis niggas are motherfucking different. Uh, they they find joy in it because there's nothing to do. Like when we were growing up. Like, we feared the summertime now because they were breaking in cars at 4 in the morning, bitch, and had school at 7, right? So it's kind of like now they're out of school. They out all motherfucking night. They mama don't give a fuck. I just saw on the news, well, no, I heard about uh, a story where a little a young man broke in some cars, and they got to his house and popped the garage, and he had two stolen cars in his fucking garage. His mama act like she didn't know what the fuck. She was hell and killer. She seen nothing, heard nothing. Bitch, it's two stolen cars in the garage, bitch. They should lock her ass up, too. The parents definitely should go to jail as well. But um, it's almost like you, like you, I don't know. It's almost sad to even, like, I don't even feel my tank up no more. I be so fucking scared they're going to steal my car, bitch. I put $10 in my car, in my car every time I go to the motherfucking gas station. Bitch, I got 30 miles to empty, baby. Like, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My way put my car back. Put it back down. But, yeah, like, I feel like, you know, school... And I, I, me too, Andy. I blame the city council members. Uh, I don't know if Janice put a little drunk ass said out there. Uh, I'll feel you for it. All these old ass people, but we're not going out voting. But all these like Memphis is just big on names and family names. If you a forward baby, you in there. But it's just like goddamn, send their asses to motherfucking war. Thank you, Tawana. That's what I feel. Y'all want to shoot some motherfuckers up? Go to war. Have fun. Baby. You get all the big pistols you want to. You can get out. Get out the motherfucking arm and get you a Camaro. And then you tear that, tear that motherfucker up driving like 40 going north down Jackson Avenue. You know, I just, I don't get it. I just don't fucking get it. Like, these young niggas is different. And I've always said, too, with Memphis, there's not a divide. Because every city has tr- crime, true enough. People always say, it's crime in New York. It's crime in Atlanta. It's crime in Dallas. It's crime. It's no, and it is. That's the truth. There's crime everywhere. But I just feel like with Memphis, I don't, when I go to New Orleans, we know where not to go. Right, you go to Atlanta, you know where not to go. You visit Dallas, you know where not to go. What's up, Tootie? Uh, you know where not to go. So, but with Memphis, these motherfuckers feel like they have the right to be everywhere. Like their part of town don't have shit that like they don't have their own clubs to go to and go shoot up. They want to go to the nice clubs and shoot the nice clubs up. They want to go to the nice mall. Like Memphis don't even have a fucking mall. Like Memphis is a big city to some people, right? Memphis don't have a mall. I'm going to Memphis to sing with Suge. <laughs> we don't have a motherfucking mall. Bitch, Wolf Chase Mall is a boutique. Her she, everything in her she is one size fit all, baby. Everything in them motherfucking spandex. You can get, I don't want no shirt 10 for 10, baby. So, food. We don't have anything. So it's almost like people don't know, like, where to go. Like Chicago. We hear about 4th of July, damn near 200 kids to get shot in Chicago, but that does not stop people from moving to Chicago. That does not stop Chicago's flow of cash. That does not stop people from shopping down Michigan Avenue. When I was in Chicago, I was walking down Michigan Avenue, and you couldn't have told me this is a dangerous city on the other side of town. Like, people stay in their vicinity, and they did crime, you know, whatever, with each other. They... Stayed in the neighborhoods, but Memphis, these motherfuckers ride the 240 loop, baby, and just trauma and just fucking just cause havoc with everybody. Like I just I don't I don't understand it. Oh. I'm drinking vodka tonight. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. I get to slumped over like James Brown, baby. Just come put a cape on top of him. Kyle Kwai upstairs. But yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no, we don't have malls. I, somebody got shot. I heard in Southland Mall. What the fuck? What are, what are y'all doing in Southland Mall? They don't even put the Christian tree up no more. So what the fuck is in Southland Mall? Uh, Hickory Ridge Mall, I guess uh, Apostle Williams at Where It Comes want to be motherfucking uh, Pastor Greenleaf, baby. Y'all have been Hickory Ridge Mall. <laughs> they got so many fucking church stores in there. Baby, look, y'all could, this could be an online store. 
But yeah, it's it's crazy. Like you, we we can't go nowhere. And then it's um it's also like people in Memphis can't get excited about new shit coming to Memphis because these motherfucking hoodlums don't know how to stay at home. They want the all star game to come here, bitch. We thinking like, girl, they gonna break my car. I gotta get an Uber. You know, it's just I don't know. I don't I don't know. And then a lot of these kids are like I, juvenile court. So like a lot of these old heads sending these young niggas out because they get right out. You know what I'm saying? They, it's a point system or some shit they got going on, baby. Lock these little motherfuckers up. And I feel like this. I said this last night. If you've been in jail within the past year off like some criminal shit, just pick their asses back up and put them back in jail. Take them like send them somewhere. Like build a little community in motherfucking Sugar Ditch, Mississippi, and take all their ass to a concentration camp and just put a gas mask on their ass. Like I, uh, I don't know. The city did that when they demolished the project and gave them vouchers. You know what though? I was living in Claiborne Homes. Um, 2015 through like maybe 2018 I liked it It was cool until But everybody had vouchers over there But it was just these these It's these young girls A lot of these My friend Keisha She always used to say These niggas homeless These niggas homeless <laughs> Like a lot of these niggas Got nowhere to go And they be you know Making a little of these The young ass bitches Who mama ain't never taught them shit They don't know shit They ain't trying to learn shit And they just Terrorizing every motherfucker about it. They around here shooting Blasting music They don't have no motherfucking Like respect for their neighbors Or their neighborhood You know They should have just dropped The whole bomb on Pepper Tree I'm sorry They should have just dropped The bomb on Pepper Tree baby And said it was a total like, I don't know I ain't gonna say that They should have dropped The bomb on, on Pepper Tree It's so inter- interesting How they have so many Provisions and loopholes For criminals and homeless Like this crazy to me and speaking of homeless clowns, I hope I don't get canceled for this, but I wrote this down in my random category. I know I do random shit every once in a while, really like every time. But uh, I saw a man on the corner the other day. He had a sign. He was like, I'm homeless. I'm hungry. I have a couple of kids, whatever, whatever. I don't give my money to homeless white people. I'm sorry. I can have a motherfucking bag full of $5 bills. If you are of the Caucasian persuasion, I am sorry. Life is, America has made life so easy for white people. If you are homeless, it is your fault. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what has happened to you. I'm sorry. If you are white, I am not giving you a motherfucking dime. I, I can't. This country has worked too hard to keep black people here and y'all here. You can't see my hand. I'm in the camera. To keep black people here and y'all right here. I'm not giving you no motherfucking money. Y'all can say I'm wrong, but I'm not. I saw something today that says um, out of every 10,000 white people, there is 11 white people that are homeless. Black people make up 13% of the population in America. And we make up 40% of the homeless population. I just, I'm sorry. I could be wrong, but I stamp it. I know it's out there. It's there now. I'm probably going to make it a real tomorrow. But I just do not feel comfortable giving money to homeless white people. I feel like you have a fucking Mercedes Benz parked across the street at this motherfucking BP. I just do. Life is too easy. You can go take a bath, apply for a motherfucking job, and be my manager. I was working for a company called FTS USA. And my motherfucking manager name was Joe. Fuck him. I'm going to say his name. His name was Joe Lundrigan. This man had one tooth in the front of his motherfucking mouth. His pants was dirty. He smelled like cigarettes all day long, and his shirt was wrinkled. And this motherfucker was my manager. He didn't know how to make a motherfucking Excel spreadsheet. And this bitch was so motherfucking threatened by me. They had to do hourly cuts. This motherfucker suggested they cut my whole motherfucking shift because I was doing circles around this motherfucker. And I was only there for about maybe three weeks. That white man did not motherfucking like me. And that's when I knew if you teach. The poorest white man, they always say this, you teach the poorest white man that he's above the the richest nigga, they'll treat you like shit. That man told me I was unprofessional because I had wore a motherfucking baby blue American Eagle polo shirt to work. And I told him, I said, man, you dirty every motherfucking morning. 
They fire my ass too though. <laughs> Then I, have y'all been seeing the homeless ladies on? It's some Indian women, y'all. They be like on Poplar and Two Forty. They they be on Germantown Parkway and all they signs say the sign shit. Like I'm homeless. I'm new to America. I got four kids. X Y Z. Girl, please, you can go get you a loan and you will be at a gas station tomorrow, baby. I if you're not black or Hispanic, I'm not giving you a motherfucking dime. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jillian. Be on the corner today and the motherfucking CEO tomorrow. Season two will definitely be on YouTube. Probably so. I hope so. If y'all are not, um, there you go right here. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. I have been trying to get everybody on YouTube because, God damn it, they are gypsies. All of them got these long ass skirts on with like wasp and uh, dragonflies on them. Baby, get your ass on away from me. I ain't giving you a motherfucking dime. I ain't got it. I'm broke. I should be out in the corner. I'm the motherfucker that's broke. I can't get food stamps. I can't get shit. I'm the motherfucker that's hurt. Make me a sign. Speaking of a sign, y'all see the cash app right there? Go ahead and hit that for me if you want to. It's the season finale, season two. We're trying to come back bigger and better. <laughs> Dollar sign, Dietrich Smith. Thank you. That's why, that's why I'm Mitch. Uh, Derek, you know I stay here. They be right They be right by me, baby. Shout out to Robin, y'all. Robin Cleveland. We have reconnected. Me and Robin were friends long ago. But we have re the Lord brought us back together. We have reconnected, and she has been such a help and a blessing to boy please whatever y'all. She really, and I can't pay her yet. But if I ever get some money, you know I take care of you, babe. But uh, she has really been a blessing to boy please whatever podcast. Uh, and before we go to the next session, boy please whatever live podcast advertisement services fifty dollars for two episodes, thirty seconds for uh, thirty second and one minute commercial, twenty five dollars for any additional episodes. Please send information to boy please whatever twenty three at gmail dot com. The payment information is above at dollar sign Dietrich Smith. Secured the collection is a brand that supports the mental growth and elevation of men, women, and children. This apparel line is focused on providing inspirational quotes and phrases in a trendy way to help consumers realize the power they possess within. Secure the Collection is a brand that aspires to inspire. By wearing this apparel, our hope is that the consumers feel motivated and encouraged to become the best version of themselves. Growth starts here. Healing, inspiring, trendsetting, secured. Visit our website at www.securethecollection.com. We are now offering free shipping on all orders. Hurry and shop now. Yeah, that's my buddy Tamara. Um, we went to her um, launch this weekend. It was really good. The food was good as a motherfucker. Oh, my God, Tamara. If you are watching, babe, that food was motherfucking superb. Jesus Christ. But make sure you guys go and support my girl, Tamara. Uh, there's a story behind the reason why she did what she did, and I think it uh, resonates with a lot of people. So uh, make sure you guys go out and support there. Like I said on the commercial, there is free shipping. She's offering free shipping, so get, you guys, please make sure you go out and you support my girl. Um, <laughs> like when I say, you know, sometimes you go places. I love you too, Tamara. You, sometimes you go places and um, – They'll have like meatballs, chicken salad, a little punch, a little lemonade, sweet tea mix. Baby, we got in that place. Tamara had motherfucking catfish, her puppies, baked chicken, loaded macaroni, loaded uh, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, cabbage, roll, salad, uh, Cajun pasta. I ate like a motherfucking dog. But yeah, uh, before I do this, let me make sure y'all see this too. Um, I am doing a comedy show. I'm not doing it. I'm going to say that. I'm hosting a comedy show. Uh, in August, August second, it is called uh, the Let Me Tell It Comedy Show. It was it will be at Thrive Midtown August second. The tickets are available. The information is on the flyer, so make sure you go ahead and screenshot that. Uh, I am hosting it. This will be my first time doing anything of this nature. So, um, pray for me. But yeah, uh, it's gonna be fun. I didn't want to tell my friend no. Uh, I got to just step out and do shit that uh, people see things, you know, like I said earlier, people see shit in you and want you to do shit. So don't be scared to do it. Don't be a punk ass bitch, as I say. But uh, yeah, make sure y'all get tickets to that. I want y'all, I want to ask you this. So um, everybody that knows me know where I work. Um, 
I don't know. It's like people. So I worked from home during COVID. Right. I work from home during COVID. And um, I feel like COVID, I don't know if COVID has made me lazy. A lot of people say COVID made us lazy. Um, But I kind of feel like COVID opened my eyes to a bunch of shit. Right? I feel like COVID, people say COVID made us lazy. I hate the fact that I really appreciate COVID. Besides like the deaths and people losing their family members, um... COVID was a great time for me. I had a fucking ball during COVID. I had so much fucking money. The casinos were closed. I had buku money. Uh, grocery stores was packed. Motherfuckers was buying tissue as if for whatever fucking reason. But people just buying up like the fucking apocalypse was coming. But it was a crazy time. But it uh, it kind of opened my eyes to shit. Like, I don't have to be in this bitch to work. Like, I feel like it was kind of fine, Jason. I kind of feel like people fucked me. Like, it fucked me up. I don't speak for myself. I feel like it fucked me up to show that I can do my job at home. And then I feel like when you ask me to come back, like, girl, for what? And then, like, last night, like I said, I partied all weekend long. Barely made it to work. Drug my ass. I was three hours late to work this morning. Three fucking hours. But I took vacation time. But I was three hours late to work this morning. Bitch, you can... Let me tell you something. You buy me a flight right motherfucking now to fucking... um. We can go to fucking Iowa. I'm going to be so excited, bitch. I'll be working off 30 minutes of sleep. Like, I have a flight in the morning. I can be in the winter bed at 2 a.m. from packing. Flight leave at 4, baby. I'm back up. So I feel like when I'm excited about doing something, I, I, I do it regardless. But it's like when I don't have that drive, and I hate to say it, like, my job is cool. It's, I've been blessed. I've been there 10 years, going on 10 years now, and um, it pays the bills. But I'm just not at the point where I'm, like, happy. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's like your supervisors be like, you know, y'all be doing something. Y'all ain't got no business. Bitch, and if there was work, to, if there was really work to be fucking done, I would be at work doing the work. But you can't be like, yeah, if we catch you at Kroger. Nigga, if you catch me at Kroger, bitch, that means you was at Kroger. You ain't doing shit either. It's just like, if there, like I said, if there was work to be to be done, I would be doing that. And if you catch me at Kroger, you just call me at Kroger, but everything that I needed, every deadline has been met, what the fuck is the problem? Like, I could be mopping my motherfucking flow and ain't shit, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of shit I can be taking care of. I can be washing clothes. I can be cleaning my motherfucking house. You know what I'm saying? It just, I feel like COVID was a great fucking time. I don't know. Your mouth is moving so my it'd probably be your wife right now. My mouth moving fast. I don't know. But uh yeah, I just feel like COVID was a great fucking time. Um uh, I enjoy every I ain't gonna say every moment because it was kind of it was very scary. I'm gonna say it was kind of scary. COVID was scary, but like it's more to fucking life than working these jobs. Like if I'm working in a fucking office, I'm typing, sending emails, doing spreadsheets, everything is fucking electronic. Y'all like every piece of work I get is being emailed. What the fuck is the problem? If I'm at Starbucks, bitch, my computer in the trunk, baby, what's the tea? I just, I don't fucking get it. I might need to go, I need to run to the doctor's office real quick. Like, I just, I don't know. It was scary as fuck. Shout out to my cousin, Bridget, Brittany Shelby Sessoms. She made the best motherfucking elderberry. I'm telling y'all, I don't, it just gave me a piece of fucking mind. Everybody, like my mom and my dad, I kept them full of fucking elderberry. I was blessed enough not to get COVID. But uh, I travel my ass off doing COVID, baby. But it 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 wasn't, you know, it it taught people a lot of shit. Like it taught a lot of motherfuckers. A lot of businesses were birthed doing COVID. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people learn how to fucking grind and go out there and get their money and show us like we don't need jobs. And we were seeing people like they were trying to they were trying to bring us back to work mid COVID. You know what I'm saying? They didn't give a fuck. And what you want me here for? COVID didn't mess up shit, Jason. Time for old school out, baby. Time for new school, baby. The flights was thirty dollars, baby. You bitch, you can catch catch me in Aruba, baby. I paid one hundred and seventy five dollars. COVID was sickening. COVID was sickening, bitch. <laughs> what can I talk about? We parted down. Put that mask on, bitch. Put some motherfucking hand sanitizer on. Some nice hot wipes, baby. We was outside. That motherfucking we was motherfucking outside. I just don't know. Um. I hated going to work anyway before COVID, but I just feel like 
when it got to the point of having to like go in this bitch every day knowing why knowing that we don't have to be here like when you show me my job doesn't have to be done like open up and i'm not saying because sometimes i did get sick of going in the house i, I mean going to uh staying in the house some days I did go to work, you know, just to get out the fucking house. Like, create hybrid positions. Like, some shit, like, if I want to come in, if I want to stay at home, you'd rather miss me the whole motherfucking day versus letting me be accessible and having my laptop with me. Use vacation time. For the fuck what? I'm not using vacation time. Like, we working from home. You, you fucking think I'm going to take my vacation time and I'm at home? Girl, please. Baby, I will be back. I'm finna run a wild my real real quick, but they got chitlins on sale, bitch. With Thanksgiving, baby. Who? I was in West Memphis, Arkansas. Bitch. <laughs> they got chitlins on sale, bitch. You know, chicken wings at went high, bitch. I was, I was all the way in motherfucking West Memphis at Big Star. They had chitlins on sale, baby. I ain't business, baby. That was on sale. I think we get some, baby. Right back. Where my mask on, bitch. And you get, bitch. I was like, motherfucker, you could be looking me straight in the face. My head, my mask on, I do. They want me. I was at home. The fuck? Definitely took a cruise several trips. Tawana. Them motherfuckers tried to lie to us and say that they can see our happy address. Girl, <laughs> I ain't gonna see. Y'all know me, bitch. <laughs> Girl, if that's the case, bitch, please. Please. But yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? I had my motherfucking laptop. I remember one time I was in Atlanta. My motherfucking boss had emailed me. He was like, I need uh, I need you to receive some bitch. I pulled over to a motherfucking coffee shop. Hey, excuse me, what's the Wi-Fi password? Bitch, sent it off, baby. Hmm. I just, I don't know. I feel like jobs require too much of your time. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, bitch, go out there and grind and do your shit. But when you're working for someone else's company, I just don't feel right as a fucking grown ass man. I gotta call a motherfucking job and be like. Well, I, I got no. I know I got one more day of vacation time left, but I can't go to bitch who. And my mama, my uh, I got a fucking family member that people lose their parents and job giving them three days of bereavement. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. God forbid anything happens to my parents, bitch. I, the people that know me know me. Bitch who? What job? Don't bitch either. You give me the time off a lot that I need, or I'm gonna slap the fuck out of somebody. One girl, don't fucking. I got to be at work too motherfucking early in the morning. People dealing with loss and grief. Y'all want to come here and play, baby. Get the fuck out of my face. Hey, Jesse. Right, point systems. Bitch, I talk, let me see something. I got rolled up every year. I, I've been in my job eight, or I mean, ten motherfucking years. I have been rolled up probably every year. Girl, get the fuck out of here. Fuck a point system. I'm grown. I got bills just like you do. Hey, girl, please. Give me my laptop and I can go. Bitch, let me go ahead and go to Aruba. I have my emails on my phone, baby. Have my shit forwarded to my phone. I'm not doing that. I'm sick of these jobs, baby. If, if you, I don't care if y'all gotta sell pussy, baby. Work for yourself. Tell you that. If you got a vagina, baby, go in business, baby. Tell everybody you selling fish plates. You gotta be, you gotta be kind of crafty, kind of maneuver around it, baby. You don't want to get flagged. But tell bitch, sick time and vacation time all the same thing to me, baby. Sick? What? I'm sick of coming in here. I'm sick of you. You know what I'm saying? Which one me to my doctor? No, I'm sick of your ass. Sign my doctor, baby. Please, listen. If you got a vagina, baby, sell it. I'm so close to going on OnlyFans. Have y'all realized that? <laughs> hey, Tim. Have y'all realized that? Um, like a lot of the shit that we thought that was like we thought was. I ain't gonna say we thought that we were taught was fucked up. When we were children or things that we was like, oh, being a stripper is bad or being a porn star is bad. It's like lucrative as fuck now. Everybody I know is thinking about doing OnlyFans. Sickening. Baby. I'm telling y'all. Quad says, yes, baby, I'm telling you, I'm putting this winning all over the motherfucking camera, baby. Somebody ain't going to like it. Call it. Mm, let me shut up. God, be quiet, ain't you? I'm about to do it after dog sit, baby. Fee finder, you know what I'm saying? Girl, please. I put this winning across this camera, baby. Hit that cash out. I get enough cash out tonight, baby. I might do it tonight on the show, baby. I just, you know what I'm saying? Like stripping and shit. Like, girl, did you, I don't. Y'all remember when there was like an NBA All Star game and it was like a bunch of money on this section? Them hoes had made a grip. And then one night, and they had to split it, and they split, it was like millions of dollars. And these strippers split it, and they still got like 100000 Bitch, it takes me a year and a half to make 100000 
and these bitches made it in one night for shaking their ass, baby. Shake when their mama gave them. Girl, please. I'm serious. Like OnlyFans is looking like this was up. Like I know I follow people. I don't. I don't follow people, but I see people like clips on Twitter and shit. Right, and they'll post like they the top whatever. Half of these motherfuckers just sexy. When it got a BBL, the men when it got their bodies done, got motherfucking tattoos. The stripper bow. But when it got their motherfucking tattoos done, and one one man just takes showers, and motherfuckers watch him take showers. What's the harm in it? Girl, please. And if y'all in the church, baby, pay your tithes. I guarantee you, pastor, they're going to say, a oh, motherfucker, die, baby. Bring them tithes in. Girl, please. Who? You know. Please run a ticket across the ring. They're going to. <laughs> Listen. I'm just saying. Think about that shit. We work in jobs. Like, jobs want so much of your time. Like, you can be 18. You at 18 years old, you qualify for this job. My job now tells you you have to be 55 to leave. I ain't too good with math, but I feel like that's what, 37 years? You want 30, you want 37 years of the best time of my motherfucking life. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to leave this job and I got motherfucking fibromyalgia, thyroids, high blood pressure, my feet swole. I don't, no, bitch. I want to retire at like 40. I don't want to leave this motherfucker and I got to go to the doctor's appointment. I'm on dialysis. A whole bunch of shit wrong with me. I don't know if I'm coming or going. I'm leaving the job. Girl, please. I got to travel. The fuck? These y'all don't give a fuck about y'all. I'm telling y'all, baby. If you got a big wiener or a fat cat, baby, put it on the screen. We got to know what's you, baby. You know, I'm just saying. You ain't got to listen to me. You know, I'm, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody, baby. <laughs> This little vodka to get to me, bitch. Ooh, wait. But yeah, I just, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, you ain't gonna listen to me. But, you know, it might be good if you did. <sighs> but yeah, uh, I want to thank y'all for tuning in to the Boy Please Whatever podcast, your favorite podcast. The- oh, you know what? Fuck that. Wait. Wait, 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 wait a minute Wait, 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 wait One minute We've been made And do all night Hold on I gotta do this I forget I got this on this thing And I got to show you how this Before I go I don't know this lady But why the fuck you come to your son uh, Kindergarten graduation like this Why are you there? Where were you? Where were you before? Because you ain't finna tell me you left that house and said, bitch, I'm finna put this on and go celebrate my son. <laughs> Come on. I know I know the live a little behind. I'm gonna wait till y'all see this. This this is a special edition because the people on the the people that's listening ain't gonna be able to see this. What in the fuck you got on? And you made them. You didn't even buy them. Ma'am. What the fuck make you put them on? Obviously, I don't know if there's a style of your stomach too motherfucker big and you couldn't you couldn't fasten those pants up. That's what my mom will call pantses. <laughs> That's what the old folks call pantses, bitch. Why do you <laughs> I see interest in too? Pants is too little. Girl. I would have put you up out of there. I'll make that bitch wear a choir robe, baby. She had to meet me in the uh, meet me in the band hall, baby. Put a choir robe on. And Prada was the loudest mammy in there, baby. Mammy and Prada ain't gonna say that. Wee. I am really an awful person, dude. Well, I just thought in my mind, Jesus Christ. Where you thought she was going, bitch? To uh, uh, what is it called? The Black Beach, uh, fucking uh, Freak Nick. Where you was going, baby? You are going around children, and I'm sure your ass is out. I, I, I'm confused. But anyway, uh, I, 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 I forgot I saw it in the bottom of my screen. I just, I couldn't wrap my motherfucking mind around it. That you would bring your grown ass. This is wrong with your kids. You brought your grown ass to this graduation. And it ain't in high school. It's not saying it's, it's permittable anywhere. You, but you went to it. This boy probably was like, it was a kindergarten promotion program. Maybe preschool. You got these big long ass ones on your motherfucking feet, and your ass is out in a tube top. Your pants ain't even fastened. So in product smell like fucking uh, Captain D's, please, girl. I'm over you. 
Feet big as fuck. Them shoes was cute. Feet big as fuck. She probably had three pair of socks on. Baby. The bitch got clown feet. But anyway, I just think it's just fucked up. I just, I would be so embarrassed if my mama came up there. And like, imagine her sitting down. That bitch pussy was out. Come on. Man. Smell like strawberry douche. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to the World Please Over podcast. You have every podcast. The only podcast that matters. This is my season finale. Season one, episode 15. <laughs> I want to sincerely thank you guys for every share, every like, every comment. It means an awful lot to me. Uh, I know I may not come across that way because I'm so rambunctious and loud and I say anything I want to say once I get comfortable. But this is something that has haunted me. I'm always very, very nervous because I'm a perfectionist and I always want to give you guys the best that I have so uh I'm really glad when I get people in the comments and the likes and the shares I'm not stuck on the views or how many people watching it one time that means nothing to me if I have two people in the comments I'm going to still give you a show as if it's a motherfucking thousand people watching um but it means an awful lot to me um I'm going to recharge. I'm going to come back better and stronger. I have a bunch of topics that I never got a chance to get to. I'm going to get to them eventually, but I just want to take a quick little hiatus. Um, most shows, hey, mom, um, thank you. Don't make me cry. Mom, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, mama. Um, I'm going to take a very, very brief uh, hiatus and come back with, like, fresher ideas and stuff like that because I'm in my living room. This is just my wall, my back wall in my room. In my living room area. Um, but yeah, if you want to hit the cash app, like I said earlier, asking for help is not begging. This does cost money to run this show, right? Uh, but if you would like to hit the cash app, whether it's $5, $2, I don't give a fuck. It helps. Uh, thank you, cousin. I love you, Sharita. Uh, hey, Brittany, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chastity. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Andy, Tamara, Keisha, Tiffany. I love everybody. If I didn't get your name, I'm so sorry. I just, the screen's like this big. But uh, I love everybody. Thank you all so much. If you can, hit the share button. Uh, I'm going to make some reels the entire um, the entire time I'm off. I'm going to go through old episodes and find something I may not have solved that may be helpful or funny or whatever. Make sure you guys follow me on TikTok. I am almost at 20,000 followers. I cannot fucking believe it. I had a video that reached, I had a single video that reached 1.2 million views. So I'm really, really proud of that. And it's very affirming. Um, so I'm almost at 20,000 followers. So if you're not following me on TikTok, please do so. It's boy, please, whatever. And also, here's my YouTube one more time is BPW. Again, that is my goal to get over to YouTube because I know I am not built for Facebook. So, uh, but I do know most of my friends and family are on Facebook. So, if you will, if you do have time, make sure you go over to YouTube and follow me there. I'm going to put it back on the screen as well. And um, thank you, guys. I do plan to be back on the last sun, the last Monday in uh, June for Pride Month because I I am a very proud member of the LGBTQ community. I am not ashamed of that. That is a part of who I am. So I do want to make sure I am back at least for the closing week of that month uh, to talk about some issues in the gay community um, because I didn't want to make this just a gay podcast. I want this to be something that everybody can relate to, but being like, as far as being black, being a male, being in a relationship, working, being an adult, I want to make sure I touch everything, but I do, I cannot be um, ignorant to the f fact, like all facets of who I am. And I would be remiss to not mention some of the issues we face in the LGBTQ community because it is not easy as a black man to stand up in a room full of people or really in front of the world, in front of strangers and say, I'm gay, you know. But I've mastered it. I don't give a fuck. It is what the fuck it is. Love me if you will. Fuck if you don't. But um, I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Make sure you guys follow me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Overcast. And there's one more I always fucking forget. But anyway, I'm on all podcast streaming, on the main podcast streaming apps. I'm on Instagram and Twitter as well. But uh, 
yeah thank y'all and uh, I will see you guys on June what's my calendar there was a lot of noise just then wasn't it I will see you guys on June 26th right June 26th that's when I'm scheduled to come back on June 26th uh, next week is Memorial Day again before I go any South Side scrappers in the house we are the best motherfucking high school in the land I don't give a fuck what nobody say nobody does what we do every motherfucking year in Scrapperville, USA. Make sure you guys come out Saturday at Pine Hill Park at 11 a.m. in your motherfucking maroon and gold, and we're going to do what we always do. And uh, I am the last, before the school closed, just for the FYI, I am the last Mr. Southside. There was none after me. And I guess when I left, they said, we might as well shut the motherfucking school down. Did you go? So, uh, love everybody. And peace, babe. <laughs>